Hi everyone, I'm Jody Barrows with The Square in a Square, and I want to welcome you to our live webinar today on Wednesday, January the 6th. Now for 2021, we're going to be doing these free webinars on Wednesday, so make sure that you sign up with your email and that you join us so that you'll get notifications about it and that you'll um, also it'll allow you to go back and to watch the replays for these different webinars. Now, I am really big on making a notebook and keeping myself organized. So this is our very first webinar for 2021. So it's a great place to start with your notebook. So get some type of notebook, whether it's a, a kind of a medium sized three ring binder, or maybe it's even something that is kind of like this, which just has the little brads and you can keep adding to it. Because we're going to be doing teachings on Wednesdays, we're going to be showing you different tips and different tricks and different techniques and different demos. That way you can make notes, so that way you know I need to go back to the January 6th webinar to see how to do the four patch pop. And that's something that I'm going to show you today in the pressing of a four patch that we'll make for our quilt. So make sure you're organized and ready to go and that you tell all of your quilting friends about this because... It is a live um, webinar for you. Um, that way you can learn and get motivated and excited and improve and hone your quilting skills. So that's what we're all about here is education and being able to teach everyone how to be the piecer that they've always dreamed of, that they've always wanted to be. Because it really is just an idea or a technique or a skill away from being able to make that masterpiece that you've always dreamed of. So live webinars every Wednesday. Make sure you sign up. You can watch replays. Get yourself organized with a notebook. To sign up. Square to sign square. up, you can just go to squareandsquare.com to our website. And once you are signed up for our live webinars, then you don't have to sign up again. Um, it And it will send you a notification to do so. There's also a place that you can comment and, and ask questions as we're going. And I want the camera to come down here and look at the number. This is a number for you. It's a texting number. It's a private number just for our quilting uh, teaching, for our webinars, classes, and seminars. It's 817-713-2879. And your name does not come in when you text me something. So if it's important for me to know you, then put your name in there. And if it's not, then just ask a quick question or take a picture of what it is that you're doing and send it to me. A picture really saves a lot of words in a text. And let me know what you need help with. It's 817-713-2879. And um, I check the text number several times a day. So anytime you have questions or need help, just go ahead and send me a little note so that I can um, help you. Uh, I always say that whenever you get lost or whenever you get stranded, that's when you need to call for help. You know, of course, trying to figure something out on your own is good. Um, and I think it's uh, important for us to strive to do things on our own. But whenever you feel like, uh, I'm just beating my head against the wall, I'm lost, I'm stranded, I need help, there's a text number there for you, okay? So I'll be waiting to hear from you. All right, so with the um, square and a square system, which is a system of making triangle units, we use that to make all of our beautiful quilts. And with that system, we do something that we call our option overview book. So here's another notebook, and you can go into the premium portal if you're a premium club member. It's right there in your portal for you to go see. And if you're not a premium club member, you can go and snoop around on my Facebook page, which is Jody Barrows with Square in a Square Quilting. And we go in and we learn the options. Everything just starts out with a square in the middle and strips on the side. And the different ways you trim it up with the square in a square ruler, you're going to get different triangle units. So this one we call option one. So when we refer to a square in a square or an option one, those are the same thing. Option two is when you sew around it again. Option three is when you get flying geese. Option four is when you get half square triangles. Option five is put anything in the middle and we've got a great quilt coming in one of our Wednesday webinars, maybe in um, about two weeks, maybe next week. I don't know, we'll see, I'm working on it. So it'll depend on how much time I have 
to get the samples ready to go. But a great quilt is coming with a nine patch in the middle. And each option is just different triangle units. And you go through and you learn the system. And then you can start applying them to all of the different quilts that you make. So this is another notebook that we work on. And that's the option overview notebook. Now quickly, before we get into our quilt, this is the original square and a square ruler. And this is the one that when, we, when you get started, this is the one that we recommend that you have. We have the um, Grande ruler, which I'm gonna talk about and use the Grande ruler today. In the quilt that I'm making, I use the Grande ruler to cut my squares, to cut my strips for my four patches, and to cut my strips um, and to cut my split rail pieces. So in today's class, I'm using the Grande multi-purpose ruler. This is the mini square and a square ruler. So many people love the mini ruler. A lot of you watching today probably already have it. Maybe text on there the thing that you love about the little mini ruler. And then today, I'm gonna to show you how to do the nine patch, although we don't have a nine patch in the quilt, but it just goes along and it's so similar to what we do with the four patch ruler probably one of the main questions people ask is will the four patch ruler make nine patches no will the nine patch ruler make four patches no if the rulers could have been combined i would have done it those of you that know me and know my system you know that i will pour as much into my books and my tools as possible um, so that you can get the max and the most bang for your buck so four patch and nine patch do separate things, but similar, okay? And those are two that we're gonna be using today. Now, if you'll look at the quilt behind me, this is the one called Road to Nowhere. It's very simple, anyone can make it. I've got a few tips and uh, tricks for you today to help make it even more speedy and more accurate for you. And uh, this one is from our new fabric. This is our Dirt Floral. This is our dirt tattered and torn, and this is our dirt check, and this is our red tattered and torn, and this is our black tattered and torn. Now, I kind of played with several different fabrics to go in here. The green on green check was a great one. There's uh, two different red checks that also was a great one to go in there, but I just really loved the accent of that black and how it picked up just a little bit of the black from the dirt floral so this is our new one road to nowhere we don't even have it quilted yet i always have a kit uh, and a quilt ready to go with whatever our newest fabrics are for this road to nowhere because it's such a great beginner quilt and it's a great one to learn how to use the four patch tool and to learn the four patch pop and this one was the one that we had previously so this one is the dirt road to nowhere and then this one was our last Road to Nowhere. And I think, I don't know that it has a color on it, but if you're interested in this color combo, we only have a couple of kits left for it. So make sure you go in and order the one with the black. And it's the same thing, just, um, just different colors, but everything is just the same block, the same way of doing it. So let's look down here at our fabrics again. And these are all of my own designs. For those of you that don't know, I design my own fabric. I don't go through a fabric company, I come straight to my fabric warehouse. We do all of the marketing. We do the designing, the marketing, the selling, the designing of the quilts, we do everything. And this, I love the everyday checks. We've got about eight different colors of it. And this one is the dirt check. It's great to use as a background or even as an accent piece in a quilt. And then we have our brand new ones. Uh, the checks came in, I think, in November of 2020. And then this one is our new Dirt Floral. And this one comes in the dirt, it comes in the red, and it comes in the blue. Now, I'm a, a historian. I love um, history. And so I love to mix the history of the fabrics and the patterns and the stories to go in with my quilts. So this Dirt Floral is from 1790. 1790 to the early 1800s was when fabric started being produced here in the United States. And Sam Slater was the main guy that was instrumental in getting the fabrics printed here in the United States instead of having them all printed um, in the United Kingdom and over across the way. So the cotton was grown here. It was shipped overseas. They wove the fabric together and then printed on it and then shipped it back 
um, here to the United States. So Sam Slater and four other guys became the five giants of the manufacturing of fabrics. And that started as early as 1790 into the early 1800s. And this print right here we call the 1790 Floral because it is one of those earliest prints made here in America. Now, uh, one of the other men of, of the five with Sam Slater is probably the most famous one, and he, his, he was uh, Mr. Lowell. And of course, we have a lot of history about the Lowell Mills in Mass, and, um, but he was not the main instigator. He was one of the fives, but he had a really big, huge um, part of those five men coming together to be able to print the fabric here in America. So we have the 1790 floral. It comes in this one with the dirt. It comes with the red tattered and torn. So it comes with the red tattered and torn back. And then it also comes with the blue off of our same blue tattered and torn. So we've used this beautiful 1790 floral as um, our main print. And it just looks gorgeous with that base check. Then we have our red tattered and torn and we have our dirt tattered and torn. So from those fabrics, we're gonna make this fast, quick, easy little quilt. Now, when you look at the quilt, let's look at it up here on the screen again, and let's make it easy so that you can see what's in a row. So for this row, the very first row, and there's two rows, and those rows just alternate. So in this row, we're going to have a big square, and of course, if you're following along with our pattern row to nowhere, it's going to tell you exactly what sizes of everything to cut. But of course, obviously, you can make them larger or smaller and, and make up your own. So this is a large square here. And then we have three pieces put together. And that is actually a split rail when you have three pieces put together in a rectangle like this. So this one we're going to call the split rail. It has the two can dirts. You go, can you go down to the next one? So it has the uh, two dirts, and then it has the everyday check. Then it just alternates from the solid square to the split rail, the solid square to the split rail, and that's what that row is. Then the other row has the split rail going horizontal, and this one it went vertical. And then we have the four patch, and then the split rail and the four patch. So the most difficult thing about this quilt is going to be actually sewing your rows together because you want to make sure that all of the red or the dominant pieces go towards the same direction, either leaning left or right, it doesn't matter. And you want to make sure that the row with the four patch has the split rail going horizontal. So a great way to think about that when you're sewing this row together is that you have to have seams coming against seams. If you have a long side coming along that four patch, then you've got that split rail turned the wrong direction. So see, when you're sewing this, you're gonna have seams of the split rail sewing in that, in that seam with the seam of the four patch. And then when you're sewing this row together, it's easy, no seams, just the open side of the split rail, of course, to the open side of the square. So make sure when you get ready to sew your rows together, you have all of those sequences of those colors turned the correct direction. So here's a four patch and a split rail. And then the four patch goes against the split rail. So the plain square will go against the long side there. Do I have that right? Yep, and we'll have a split rail like that. Okay, so solid square, split rail goes vertical, four patch row, split rail goes sideways. Okay, so when we're going to use a four patch ruler. So this is what the four patch ruler looks like when you get it. Um, and what the four patch ruler does is it lets you know when you're... Um, cutting your four patches if this if everything is good because when you look at a four patch you have four sides to sew well four sides to cut four sides to sew and then you're going to press it uh, probably two times so when you have eight in each one four times eight is 32 you're going to have a lot of human elements in here that can make this go crazy 
Now, when people sew two long strips together, they get kind of crazy with their seam and it weaves in and out a little bit and your piece may be moved a little bit when you cut it. So you don't know if this section is good or if this section is good or if it's staying straight. So when you use the four patch tool, you're going to put, um, let me see if I have my little whiteboard here so you can see it. Let's look at the lines of the ruler. And when you use it, you're going to um, only look at lines. You don't really look at numbers when you cut. So we'll talk about cutting first, and then I'm gonna come back in and give you some information on the numbers and how to use it as a design tool, okay? So here is the heavy grid line. So the heavy grid line is gonna go on that seam of my two strips. And then there's the little rectangles. So if I wanted a little four patch or a little bit bigger four patch and on up. So it'll actually make a one and a half inch four patch all the way up to a 10 and a half inch four patch. And normally you don't need one larger than that. So the heavy line, heavy grid line will go on the seam and then my piece will fit inside the rectangle or what I call a box car and you'll make your cut. And so if you're right handed, of course you do it like this. And if you're left handed, of course you'll just turn it and you'll cut here. It's the same, same thing. You're not looking at numbers, you're just looking at lines. So you wanna do a cleanup cut and then after you do your cleanup cut, Put your heavy grid line on the seam and then move the ruler either to the left or the right until it fits inside the rectangle. So here it is here on the seam. So that means this piece is staying straight uh, with the seam. It's not starting to tilt to the left or to the right. So this keeps your work straight um, and true in the middle. Now, when I look at my rectangle, and I have it here on my cleanup cut, I can tell that it's fitting in here good, so that means the length on this one is just perfect. The length on this one is going outside of it, so that means this one right here is just a little bit big, but I'm not gonna worry about it because I can trim that off after I get my four patch put together. Now, hand flat, make your cut. Now, one of the things that I love about the four patch ruler is I know instantly with every piece if my width is good, if my length is good, and if from the seam to the cut edge on both pieces is correct, and that my square stays square. So that square staying square is really important because as I move down into my work, when you're using just a normal ruler to trim your work up, you know that after every three or four cuts, you've got to go in and square it up again because it starts to tilt left or right, and this seam starts moving. It doesn't stay right through the middle horizontally the way that it should. So I know with every piece, and my piece is getting a little bit smaller, it's still good. And so if they're good, I'm going to put them in the good stack. If they're just a little bit off and fudgeable, I'm going to put them in the fudgeable stack. And if they're too crooked or too short, then I'm gonna put it over in a separate stack. And that stack means it doesn't play well with others. So that means that that section is not gonna sew well to that section. It's not gonna play well with it. And I'll do something else with it. I won't um, waste it. So as we go into the strip, notice now how the red is lined up perfectly. So um, I know that those, I, I don't have any that are skinny, so I'm not gonna worry, I don't have to worry when I start picking these up because when you start picking these up to sew them together, um, when you're using the four patch ruler, you know that all of them are big enough and are going to work. You're, so when I look at this, if I was looking at one, and let's say that it was a little bit short, if I had used a traditional ruler to go in and trim it up, I wouldn't know, okay, is this the correct one? And so this one's a little bit big, so that's okay. Or was the red one the correct one, and this one is too small, and it's gonna cause me trouble. So when I'm working with these from the good and the fudgeable stack, I know that all of these will work, and I don't have to worry about it when I see a piece that's too short. I know that this one is a little bit larger, because if they were too short, I put them over in a separate stack. 
So that's going to save me a lot of time and a lot of trim up time when I get ready to, to put these together. I don't have to spend so much time squaring up my work. So you would just continue to go into your piece, putting the heavy grid line on the seam, looking for it to fit inside the rectangle, keeping it all straight and square. So you've seen me cut at least three and it is still staying square. They don't start tilting to the left or the right. And just keep going until you have all of your strip cut or all of the four patches cut that you need. Okay, let's look at it as a design tool. Let's look at the ruler as a design tool. So I have, a, is this a good spot? Mm -hmm. Okay. So these numbers here on the right, they match up with these words right here. And that says the cut size of my sewn patches. So if I know that I need a four patch that is a cut, let's say eight inches, because it says it's going to be the cut size, and I know that it's eight inches that I need, I can come over here and find whatever number it is I'm looking for. But let's say I need an eight cut. And if I stay inside my little railroad tracks and come over here, this these words say the width of my cut strip. So that means the width of my cut strip needs to be whatever the number is here that's inside the railroad track. So let's say you need a four patch that is a seven inch cut. That's kind of a hard one to work with. So if I find my cut seven inch four patch, I can come over here and it tells me three and three fourths is the size of the width of my strip. If I stayed inside my lines correctly, okay? So let's say, let's work with it opposite. Let's say that you have strips and you want to make a four patch out of those strips. Maybe you have a jelly roll that's two and a half inches and you want to say, okay, what size of cut four patch would I get? So come over here to the width of strip numbers, find whatever it is that you're looking for. So here's two and a half if I had a jelly roll and I stay inside the little row row tracks and it tells me that I would have a cut four and a half inch, which means it would sew down to a four. If you have a honey bun, which is a one and a half inch, find your one and a half inch and come over here and it says two and a half. So if you're very experienced with numbers and four patches, some of these are easy to figure in your head, but some of them are not. And so those are all on here to help you as a design tool. So we have any questions on that four patch? I don't think so. Okay. So well, after you have your patches cut, of course you're going to sew two together. And it doesn't really matter which way you press them. Just make sure you press all of your strips the same so that when you get ready to put two together, that seam will nestle together and match up and be real smooth. You should be able to hold it in your hand and it feels smooth, not knobby. And then you'll come in and you'll make your seam and then you'll be ready to open it up uh, for a press. And what I like to do with any time I have what I call a four-way stop intersection. So see, I have a seam here and I have a seam here. So this is like a four-way stop intersection. Anytime I have that, whether they're plain squares or whether they're um, half square triangles, whatever, instead of pressing them so that they're all, uh, instead of like sometimes you'd want to press, most of the time you would press like this with all of the seam going one direction or the other, but then you have a lot of thickness right here in that intersection at that four-way stop. So I like to do what I call the four patch pop. So what that does is it opens it up. It actually opens it up just right there in the very center. You can see the four little patches of the good side of the fabric. And look how the seam lays down and it just kind of spins either clockwise or counterclockwise. So when you do the four patch pop, you're going to... Um, I hear. Yeah, okay, so we want you to further, yeah. be able to get a really good close-up of doing the four patch pop. So here is my piece. This seam has, um, the first ones have been pressed when I sewed just the two together here and the two together here. Now I've done this seam and it's time to press and I want to do the four patch pop. So I'm looking for the fabric that's on top. So see how this one is the top one? And I'm just going to grab it on each side of that firmly. And the section that's on top, I'm going to 
bend that towards me. So look how I bend that section towards me. And it just pops open that little center and then you can go to the iron and press. So you should see the four main colors of fabric of whatever it is that's in your square and your seams all lay down and rotate one direction or the other. So let's do that again for the four patch pop. So you have your four patches sewn together and you're going to hold it in your hand where that that horizontal seam is. You're going to grab it on each side of that seam and whichever one's on top, that's the one that you're gonna to twist to you. So I just twist it like this. And we call it a pop, because it kind of pops one or two little stitches right there, probably a stitch and a half. And then when you go to press, you'll press it like this, and you can see the four pieces of uh, fabric. So you have a little baby four patch there just like your bigger four patch here. I love the four patch pop. And you can do it anytime you have four pieces coming together and you have a four way stop intersection. And it just makes the back of your quilt um, very smooth and very nice. So you can see in um, this row here, um, your split rails will go horizontal and your four patches will all lean to one direction. It doesn't matter which direction. <clears throat> okay, so the next one we need to make is our split rail. So once again, you're going to put your th three rows together and press. And since these are not being sewn up to anything else except just the four patch and the solid square, it doesn't really matter which direction you press these. So most of the time when you're putting three strips together for a nine patch, you press so that... Um, you're going um, either to the dark or the light and this center one would look like this but since we're going to be sewing these um, just in the split rail fashion it doesn't matter and actually it's better if they all go one direction so on this one I'm suggesting that you all go one direction can you overcut your, your strips yes you can overcut your strips a little bit and then when you sew your strips together make sure you go slow lots of times when you just have two strips together and you're sewing them in your machine you go fast you sew like a jackrabbit because you think oh there's no points there's no intersections and you just zip that strip right through your machine and it starts to weave a little bit and then when you get over to start cutting it then you're thinking oh well these are too skinny or this is too big or whatever so, so you can overcut with the four patch, but when you get to the nine patch uh, section, the center section has to be right or when you're, um, or the correct size, or when you just have two together, then you can go back in and trim up the, the raw edge size of that before you sew this next one on. Hopefully that makes sense. I didn't have a sample here of that uh, to show you. Can you do the pop with a pinwheel? Yes. Like you have in water wheel? Yes, and I think I have one right here I can show you. Right, so here are uh, four half square triangles coming together. And so you can see here on the back how I did the, the four patch pop. And you've got four little, four little triangles making a little baby pinwheel there. So anytime you have that four-way stop intersection you can do that and it'll help alleviate that bulk and with a four patch uh, of the pinwheels like this you really have a, a knot right there because you've got eight fabrics all right here in this little fourth of an inch square and when you get ready to either quilt through it or sew to your next piece or whatever it can really be a knotty a knotty area that give you trouble more questions that's it. Okay, now with our quilt that we're doing today, I'm just going to use the Grande, and here is the Grande ruler, and it has this nice big nine inch square here, and I'm just going to use it and go to the five inch, and I'm going to put the five inch here and here. So see how I'm I'm I've already done a cleanup cut. So I'm using two, area, two sides to measure and cut with. I'm not just doing the width. Lots of times with a ruler, you just come in here and you just place it on the five inch and give it a whack. But 
when you already have seams in here, the seams can, the piece can kind of shift up or down. And so it's really nice to come in here and be able to use two sides. And then you can also use any of the lines on the ruler to look at the seams and make sure that you're staying nice. So I'm looking here at this three and a fourth inch measurement that lines up right here with the seam. That's really neat. And I'm using my little mark lines on the ruler and it stays the same and it's three and a fourth here with the seam. So I know that my center piece is staying in the center well and I know that two of my outside edges here are gonna be really nice and neat. I can look up here and see how that one's doing and then I'm gonna make my new cut. So not only will the sides all be the size that I need it to be, but the square won't be twisted or um, um, a screw inside there. It really will stay nice and square. Hand flat and then make your cut. Oh, and somebody had a hand flat. Why hand flat? Hand flat, when your Instead hand is flat, no matter what you're cutting, whether it's squares or strips, or pieced units or square and a square options anytime you're trimming you should always do hand flat now if you're a premium club member we have a beginner section in there that's going to go through all of this cutting and these tips and hints and if you're not a premium club member if you go to my square and a square facebook page there's um, a new uh, video that i reposted just a couple of days ago uh well it's an old video an older video not I didn't make it like this week or whatever, but there's two videos actually on my Facebook page that should be pretty much at the top of the feed. One of them is just general overall cutting, um, and you'll know which one that one is because I have an orange shirt on. And then there's another one that I think is the most current one, and it has the Grande ruler. So it will go in, I think it's eight minutes, and it will give you all of the benefits of the Grande and how to use it. So highly recommend you go in and watch those two cutting videos. And then also if you're a premium club member, go in and watch the cutting videos in the beginner section. Do you overcut the strips, then trim down the strip set prior to cutting the four patch sections and the split rail block? Okay, so uh, lots of times, and those of you that haven't been following me, then you're, you haven't been kept up to date on this overcutting but we do do a lot of overcutting. So let's look down here at the, the four patch. Uh, the four patch is just two strips put together. So um, you can't overcut. So meaning that if these were two inches, you can make them a little bit larger than two inches wide, sew them together, come in and cut your sections, put your four patch together. And then when your four patch is together, cause see then all of your human element your PPMs, your personal private measurements from cutting, sewing, and pressing, all of that is done. Then you can come in and trim this up to be whatever size of square that you needed it to be. And once again, you can use your grande ruler to do that. And one of the things I love about it is, is that you'll be able to check everything all at once. You'll be able to check the total width of your four patch if it's the correct size. And you'll be able to go in here and look at what this the individual squares are and what they should be. So, you know, if they were overcut and larger, then you could bring it back in and put it on the measurement that it should be and trim off any overcutness uh, that you have. And when you do overcut, then even those pieces, I always say that when you trim your four patches, you're gonna have a good stack, a fudgeable stack, and then a stack that's too skinny. So if you overcut your strips with the four patch, then you're not gonna have a stack that's too skinny. Um, all of those would work and you go in on that last time and trim up because we're not perfect. We're not gonna sew those strips together perfect and have every two inch or three inch section wind up to be exactly what it should be. So the overcutting is another tip or trick that I teach so that you can get uh, perfection. Now, when you do the nine patch, because you have three uh, strips on here, what you have to do, and I'll go slow through this and hopefully everybody can follow along with me because I don't have the pieces here to show you. So you would overcut your strips and you would sew two together. Whatever is in the middle, then you would have to go back and trim that one to the correct size. And of course the correct size you have to take into consideration you already have a fourth of an inch gone because you have a seam here where you sewed your seam. Also when you have a long strip and it's been sewn and pressed, it may not fit under the ruler really well 
to go in and just make all of this cut all at once on here. So you may work in sections and your grande ruler would help you do that. That would be another great video that I can do uh, for you guys on our Wednesdays. So um, I'll make a note of that and go in and talk about overcutting with the nine patches. Then after you have that trimmed perfectly, then you would sew your next strip on, come in here and use your nine patch to cut it up, sew your block together, and uh, then any trimming that you need to do on the outside, you do that very last, just like you do here on the four patch. So let's go ahead and cut some split rails that we need for our quilt, and then I can show you some nine patch um, in here with this strip. So I'm just using the grande, and like I've said before, it shows me two sides. I can actually tell that the third side is good. I can tell if my inside seams are staying square and straight. Uh, hand flat. I don't know that I finished with the hand flat. The hand flat puts all of the weight um, of your hand here at the palm of your hand and your fingers lay here lightly. So as you hold the pressure of the ruler down on the table with the fabric in between, it's going to be more stable and more sturdy and your piece is not going to move around. Because see, my, my, my weight is here and my piece is not going to move around so much. If you cut tall like this, like a spider, then each finger has a different pressure and a different weight that it's putting on the ruler. And if you don't hold it tight enough, it's going to wiggle when you press up against it to cut. If you hold it too tight, it's going to start sliding before you ever even get your cut. And your fingers are constantly working against each other because your little one is not strong. Your thumb is strong. You know, these two are stronger than this one. And you've just got all these different pressures coming together. It can make your hand sore. It can make your arm sore. And it can make the cutting more tedious. So, and um, it, you can check with any ergo people or... Um, you know, uh, physical therapist people or whatever, and your hand flat is best for your cutting, for your, your hand, your joints, your wrist, your arm, everything. Now, um, it may, you know, with different health issues, you may have a little bit of different pressure somewhere, you know, it might be harder to do, but um, even if there's just, of course, we don't want you to hurt yourself, and check, you know, if you do have that condition, you have a doctor that you can check with. But I think they will say that even if it has a little bit of, of pressure on it, it's still going to be better for you than the spider. Okay? Hand flat, make your cut. And you won't have all of that slippage, and it's better for your your arm and hand. So those are going to go vertical in the quilt just like that and you would just keep working your way into your piece to get all the pieces that you need. Now let's talk about this as a nine patch and let's look at the nine patch ruler. It's similar to the four patch but it's got room for another strip of fabric and so we have to make allowances for that. Are we good with no glare and everything where you want it Steve? Can you go up a little bit? like that okay all right so you have three pieces of fabric so let's talk about our numbers first so the first row of numbers it says the width of your cut strip we don't use these two numbers very often so I'm not even going to tell you anything about these two numbers in here today and then these numbers here are the cut size of your nine patch so once again if you know that you need a nine patch that is 11 inches, that's not easy to figure in your head what size of strip to cut. So find your 11 inches, stay inside your railroad track, and come around and it tells you the width of your cut strip. And same thing, if you know you have leftover strips from something, let's say that you have, let's pick a number that's a little bit harder, let's say that you have three and a fourth inch strips left over, or scraps or whatever you've trimmed up, and you want to make a nine patch. Come in here and find that three and a fourth and come around inside the railroad tracks and it tells you what size of um, nine patch you'll have when you get those all sewn together. And of course the cut size, it still has raw edges. So if it tells you that it's, um, we'll do an easy number, let's tell you that it's nine and a half, then of course it sews down into a quilt as a sewn or finished nine inch. Now when you go to cut, you're going to go first to the heavy grid line, just like we did on the four patch, and you're going to put it on the top seam. And then these little stair step lines will go on the bottom seam, and once again, it will fit inside 
the rectangle unit. So this section right here, because we have a strip in the middle and not just two together, this is why the four patch really won't work for, to cut your nine patches. It's because you don't have it built in for that extra seam and that extra strip in the middle and knowing. And um, there's a, a quilt I'm working on that has nine patches I mentioned earlier. And that center section here, because you already have a sewn on each side, you're going to have more trouble with the center section being what it should be than you are on the outside of edges. And of course, if this center section is too skinny, then it's going to eat up fabric and make it too short and not full enough here on the outside edge. So let's cut with it. Let's cut some nine patches. So here is my um, heavy grid line on the top seam. And here's my stair step line on the bottom. So this tells me that this intersection here, right here under the ruler, that this is good. It's perfect. I've got my seams right where they should be. I've already did a cleanup cut, so I have it inside my rectangle. And now I'm going to stay here. So with both of these lined up where they should be, that is really going to stay square. It's not going to shift to the left or right. And with nine patches, that happens tremendously a lot. You'll have most likely every third one is going to be off just in the tilting, even if it's good inside here and has enough on the outside edge. And you're going to have to go in and do a new cleanup cut. So just, you know, just if that was the only measurement I was looking for to help keep it square, boom, 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 that's going to be the best, uh, the best. Okay, so I always say that don't move your rulers around, just kind of pick them up and slide them down and move your piece so that you can see what you're doing for the next one. That way you don't get your ruler all out of whack, meaning that you've turned it upside down, you moved it over there, then you pick it up and you look at it and you flip it and you turn it, and it's hard to get back to the numbers and the lines where you're at. So if you just gently pick it up, move your piece of fabric, and keep going, then your ruler is already almost in placement. Now this one here, um, I'm lining up good here and here, and that's very important. And I have a little bit extra coming off here. So that means my piece is too big. But since I can just sew my nine patch together and then go back in and trim it up perfect, that's not a bad thing. But I know that it's not too short, because if it's too short, and then I get ready to come in here and sew these together, and I have a piece that's too short, normal nine patches you don't know okay is this the good one and that's too long so that's okay or is this the good one and this one's too short and that's going to cause a problem so you always know and you just continue to come in whoops just like this oh i already made my cut that's why i didn't i could feel that it wasn't cutting and just keep going so do we have any um questions on um the quilt that we're working on or the four patch or nine patch ruler? Um, no, but uh, anyone watching on Facebook will need to text them uh, if they want a live answer. Okay, if, if you're on Facebook and you want a live answer, then you need to text to 817-713-2879. It's easier for us to monitor that and filter out the real questions instead of, uh, you know, people saying, you know, um, I have this ruler, I love it, or... Mm -hmm. Um, I'm from Wisconsin. Um, we can just go right to the questions that people have. So 817-713-2879 if you have a question. So while we're waiting for people to get some questions in, if you want a live answer today, do that as quick as you can. I'll tell you about some other things that's going on um, here with um, Square on a Square. So we're going to be doing a lot of teaching multiple times a week. Um, in this year of 2021, we know that it's winter and it's dark outside and people are home and that there's still um, a virus out there that's lingering at your door waiting to get you when you step out. So we want to provide as much information and fun and excitement in the safety and the comfort of your own home where you can sew. We have a wonderful Square in a Square Facebook page. We have a YouTube page. And then we also have some other paid locations, which is the Quilt Club Week and the premium club members. But um, what a, since this uh, webinar today, and this is a Wednesday webinar, this is open to all of the quilt world, and they will be free webinars on Wednesday where we're gonna go in and do different teachings like I did today. 
So make sure you go to the website to squareandasquare.com and sign up with your email. And that way we'll get, um, we'll send you notifications and reminders that on Wednesday we're, we're having the live webinar. And then also um, once you sign up in that webinar section, it says webinars 2021, then you won't have to it sign says, up uh, all year. You'll be in there. The it says time. email list there. So sign up on the email list. And then get once you sign up on the email list, then that gets you in. Now, once you're signed up, you don't have to sign up for the rest of the Wednesday webinars. If you go in and sign up and complete it, do it properly, then you'll get notifications and you'll be able to just to pop in there on Wednesdays when we have it. You'll also be able to have replays. You can go in 24-7 and go back in and watch our Wednesday um, webinars and get that replay and say, okay, now what did that look like? What really did she say? Remember to start a notebook and up at the top, put Wednesday webinars, January 6th, and this is what we taught. We taught four patch, we taught nine patch, we talked about the grande, um, and this is the quilt, whatever else that stuck out to you today. That way you know, okay, I need to go back and find the January 6th webinar and see how she did those four patches. That was really cool. That way you can keep yourself organized because by the time we get through, uh, there's going to be a lot of Wednesday webinars with a lot of teaching in there. And we've got this planned all the way to the end of March. We're going to be doing it every Wednesday and then we'll kind of reevaluate. And um, I don't know why we wouldn't continue to do them on, on Wednesdays, but um, we're planning about 90 days out. Now we also have starting here in January, we're going to be having a block of the month and the block of the month is a paid program. So for $50, you can get into the video teachings and we're going to do those on Mondays and uh, you'll also get your pattern. You can use fabric from your own stash. You can order bits and pieces of fabric from me and add your own stash or you can order the kits. So let me show you, and it's a block of the week. I hope I said block of the week, didn't I? We're not going to do one a month. We're going to go in and do a teaching every Monday. So every Monday will be the paid teaching. We're going to do the block of the week. We'll have the videos. We'll have the demos just like this. Use your stash. Buy some of our fabric. Maybe you just want to go in and buy the borders of the background and use your stash for your your pieces of your blocks and you're going to learn a lot of tips and techniques and you're going to learn the square in a square system and um, you will need the original square in a square ruler to do that also uh, right now we have until the 20th of january we have a fabric sale going on so these new florals that we have if you order three yards or more uh, you'll be able to jump in and get that discount on your fabric. We also, until the 20th of January, have free shipping on anything on our website if you order $150. So if you order $150 or more, fabric, books, rulers, patterns, whatever, then you'll get free shipping in the U.S. If you're out of the U.S., then we do a pro-rate thing on it so that you can still get a discount on your shipping. So, and of course, you can sh choose UPS or FedEx or any of that uh, post office inside there and it seems like now that Christmas is over the post office has kind of got a little bit better um, on their shipping and things are arriving more timely uh, those of you that have ordered a kit for your block of the month we'll start shipping those right away this week and we'll make sure that all of them are shipped before we start on our block of the week remember that you can go in and watch replays so even if your package is delayed a day or two you'll still be able to get in jump in there wherever you're at and start um, start learning and start making your blocks. Lots of times it's fun to make a block out of some scrap fabric and just make sure that you understand everything that's going on and then jump in with your kit fabric. I always recommend that. So block of the week on Mondays and Wednesdays, we're gonna do our um, webinars like this that are just tips and hints and different quilts. We've got some great projects planned for you. We got some questions, Steve? Uh, no. Oh, well. Uh, do we have to worry about your your red fabric fading? No, that's a good question to, to ask. All of my fabrics are made and created so that you don't have to worry about any of the dark or vivid colors. We use the colors from the 1800s, which are very deep, rich colors. And if you go in and look at any of our quilts that we've shown on any of the webinars, um, you can see just just the beauty of all of those deep colors and the way that we put them together. But no, I don't pre-wash any of my fabric. Now, with saying that, 
you need to make sure that your water temperature is cold or cool. Nothing that was alive, cotton fabric was alive or is alive, you, a dog, a horse, whatever, should uh, be washed in over 82 degrees. So make sure that you wash it in the cooler temperatures and um, you shouldn't have any problems with it. Also, if you're a premium club member, go into the textile beginner classes. We talk about how to put a piece of fabric you don't know how old it is or what brand it is, how you can put it in a jar of warm water. So you'd put your red piece in a jar of warm water, put your light piece in another jar, shake them up with your water that you wash in. And if any of the color bleeds out, then you know that that color is going to bleed. Now, fabric really started changing in the way that it was manufactured around the year 2000. Anything that's older than that, um, I don't trust. Anything that's newer than 2000 kind of is in a new set of rules. And however that fabric was created at the mill, there's a process that they do at the mill. And I'm very picky in the mills that I choose because I want this process done right. But there's a process in the, at the mill that is done and it sets those colors. And if it was not done right at the mill, that color is always going to give you trouble. So say you have a, a red from somewhere you know, and it, it, you know, gave you trouble and then you wash it and you think, okay, now it's going to be okay because I've washed it. Now I'm going to use it. That's not true. Don't trust it. Don't, uh, once a fabric is created or made, there is really very little you can do to change it. Whether you wash it, whether you use vinegar, whether you use a setting process, uh, whatever, it's very, very difficult to change it once it comes from the meal made that way. That's why I only use certain fabrics, and that's one reason why I make my own. Do your kits come in different sizes? Some of the kits come in different sizes. Uh, the Road to Nowhere is just the one size, but a lot of them are pretty easy to do. You could say, well, if the quilt is, let's say it's 50 by 70, and I want it larger, you know, you can... You can um, say okay I need it if I want it queen I probably need to add two more kits or whatever and if you ever need help with that I'm here to help you with it you know say I really like the road to nowhere but I want a queen size what would you recommend okay somebody has sometimes your members have said that yeah you'll help yeah we'll yeah. help you with that so that you can can get the, uh, some of them are very easy to do just to double and some uh, are not so like when we did star flower uh, like a year ago, we did Starflower. We did it in like four different sizes. Um, there's several on the website that we have done over time in several different sizes, but we'll help you. It's when when I make a quilt, um, uh, unless I want that quilt a certain size for me, for whatever it is I'm doing in my house, after I've done this for 40 years, I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of quilts in my house. I don't need every quilt a big quilt to show you the beauty of it and to demo it. So sometimes I make them smaller just to make the process for you and then build them out in, in bigger sizes for you by adding multiple uh, blocks for it. So a lot of my quilts nowadays, I'm not, even, I'm not even quilting unless someone says they want that quilt or unless I want that quilt, I'm not even quilting my quilts anymore. So I, I have a lot of tops. I don't, it takes up more space. It costs, you know, more money. So I'm not, and, and if you, you know, the same thing, you can just be a topper if you want to. You don't have to get every quilt quilted. You don't have to do that. If you enjoy the process of just playing with your fabrics and putting the pieces together and you enjoy that puzzle part of it, then just do it. You don't have to get every quilt quilted. And then when someone in your circle of friends or family says, hey, you know, or you need a gift, or I really like that quilt you made, then you can go in and get the quilt quilted, whether you do it or hire it out to be done and put that extra time and money um, into it. Don't be afraid to be a topper only. One of your members mentioned that if you want to do the block of the week, that you might as well sign up for premium for a yes. little bit extra. Yeah. And if they want pricing and all that information, if yes. they fill out their name yeah. on the website. So if you go to the website and fill out your name, there's a place there in the email section to say that you want information mm -hmm. about Premium Club. Premium Club is a club that we've had for, I would say, over four years now. I think we're getting close to five years. And it's a year-long um, subscription membership. I almost said prescription. Steve's a 
retired pharmacist, so prescriptions in my head, but it's a subscription. It's a year long subscription, <laughs> not prescription. Although it is a prescription to improve your quilting. So I guess it is a prescription. We're going to tell you how to do it and your health and your mental health, of course. Okay. So the premium club is a paid um, website that you go to, you get it for a year. All of our teachings go in there. All of our webinars like this go in there. Some, uh, some of them are live like this. Some are all edited in there. We have, um, so many things from all of our different books, um, different individual patterns. Um, and in the beginning, we kind of had it divided up like premium one was like the first year and premium two was the second and so on. Uh, but now it just all goes into the premium membership. But there's hundreds of hours in there and everything, even if you don't want to make the quilt, everything helps you become a better quilter and you can apply it to all the different projects and quilts that you make. And for example, um, the um, uh, block of the week that we're doing, that's a part of Premium Club. So their pattern is in there. They're just going to download. Their teaching is in there. Um, they can use from their stash or they can purchase a kit. And if you are signing up for Premium, you do get a, um, there's a discount in there for your books and rulers. So if you're new and you're getting books and rulers, that's another opportunity to get a better price is when you join, you have like two weeks to order books and rulers at a discounted price. Um, the Welcome Home Quilt, I'll show it. It's one that we're just finishing up on and um, you can take the class for $50 and that's your video teaching and your pattern. Or if you're in the Premium Club, it's just a part of it. So you can see how if you want to do our programs, it doesn't take long you know, at $50 here and there to have your membership uh, paid. So put your information in there and we'll send you all of the details on the premium club. It's not a discount club, um, but um, you do get some different specials and discounts at different times. So this one is called Welcome Home and we're teaching it on Mondays. We started right about Thanksgiving time. And so those videos are in there. You can go back in and, and, and do it. And it's a beautiful scrap quilt. Um, just pull from your stash and you can get it made. So all of the different things that we're going to be adding and doing this year, that will all just be a part of your premium club. The premium club members don't have to go in and pay for their patterns for welcome home or the block of the week. Of course, there are some patterns you pay for and patterns in the books and you pay for the books, but there's a lot of good freebies in there for you. Also, we, we try to do as much as we can. And I think, I think all the members that are on and watching today would agree uh, with that. So do we have some other questions we have? So stay tuned for our Wednesday webinar to join our block of the week that will be starting in, um, here in January. We'll make sure that all the kits are out. We plan on starting the 18th on Monday, and I think all the kits will be out, but we'll, we'll play that by ear. We may start it the next week. if We want everybody to have their stuff so yeah. we can fine tune it. So some other questions? I think we're uh, okay. So sign up for um, our free Wednesday webinars, become a premium club member. Also with the premium club member uh, thing, we have our own premium club Facebook page. And it's so fun to go in there and see all the different uh, color combos that people are using for their quilts and to just have a, a little community there of people who I'm very proud of my group. My group is very nice to everyone. So whether you're a beginner and you need a lot of work, you don't have to be afraid to post your stuff. Everybody's going to be encouraging to you and uh, give you help to help improve you. Um, you don't have to worry about people saying you just need to throw it in the trash and start over again. <laughs> you know, the, everyone is very, very sweet and nice and very helpful. I'm very proud of my, my premium club group on the Facebook page. Okay. So any other questions? Are you done? Yeah, that's our teaching. So, yeah. so we're done. Just a quick um, demo, a great one for beginners, or if you want just a real relaxed quilt. Or This is also a good one if you have a, a quilt that you need to give to a, not a baby. Um, I mean, it would be great for a baby one too, but I'm thinking more of a two to five-year-old. It's a great snapping quilt size for them, uh, one that they can drag around and carry around or put in the car or whatever. And it's great with little novelty prints for kids, too. I've seen it in just about everything. All right, we're going to call it quits for today. We'll see you either on Monday or Wednesday or maybe even on a surprise Friday that no one knows anything about yet. Well, this Friday, we're doing that. 
This Friday we're doing a surprise Friday? Yeah, no, doing. no, no. This Friday we're doing our last block for Welcome Home. So Welcome Home uh, members and Premium Club members, I'll see you Friday, okay? If not, see you next Wednesday. Stay safe and stay quilting.